I have seen or experienced firsthand the struggles of living check to check, the shortage of affordable housing, and the increase of rent. It is difficult to live here. So today, I sit here to address the ever-growing problem of illegal vacation rental business in our neighborhood. So don't get me wrong, I support all legal rental businesses in zoned and permitted areas. So, if anyone here thinks illegal rental vacation business is okay, we need to put our thinking in check because it's game over. The consequences for doing illegal vacation rental business in our neighborhood is Bill 85. 89 CD2. It's time to take action on illegal vacation rental businesses. Pass Bill 85, 89 CD2. Mahalo. Okay, any questions? This part? Okay, thank you. Hey, Randall Myers. Uh, thank you for listening to my testimony. Uh, I'm Randy Myers. Uh, my wife and I are retired DOE teachers. Having uh, 75 years of service between us, from she had started in second grade, <clears throat> and I taught at Pearl City High School, Lelihua. We both taught the last 25 years at Sunset Beach Elementary School before retiring. You can see I'm losing my teacher voice. Um, I also coached for 17 years, youth sports, and five years at uh, Kuku High School, so I kind of like the big red behind us here in support. <laughs> um, our community has changed. I. My own kids grew up in the Sunset Beach area. Uh, we've lived there for 40 years back when two teachers could scratch together enough to buy a house and live in the community that we taught. Um, Ten years ago, there were two vacation rentals in our community, and we would look towards Kailua and Lanika and say, well, they'll take care of their own business. But today, there's 16 within shouting distance of my house. And these are all places where renters lived, uh, from surf shacks to... Uh, just working people, our communities to be vibrant, families, um, kids running around. Now it's rental cars and rolling suitcases. And I'm in full support of this. It was really nice to hear the testimony providing some backbone to the enforcement of this because that's the real key is getting enforcement out there and, and changing this over and helping us rehabilitate our communities. And I hope, Councilwoman Kobayashi, that you'll join in on this and help us bring back our communities. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Terry Kamo. Hi, um, aloha. My name is Terry Kamo, and I am testifying against bills 85 and 89. And uh, before I start, I really want to thank you all. This is a really hard issue for everybody, and I'd like to thank you also for um, that additional whole home rental portion that you put in there. My husband and I were born and raised in Hawaii. Our grandparents came from Japan in the early 1900s. Both of our fathers were in World War II. My father-in-law was a 442 member. Um, two years ago, we exchanged inherited condos for one side of a beach house duplex in the North Shore um, with plans that, that it would be a family home that we could keep for our kids and their kids' kids. The income made it possible for me to retire from teaching. You know, they don't pay teachers too well. Um, and to do numerous badly needed repairs for both the duplex and our personal home. We pay the higher real estate taxes, transient accommodation taxes, and GE taxes. We'd also happily pay any additional annual registration fee to do this legally. Most of the hotels, maybe like 95%, um, are owned by off-island interest. In this testifying process, I was flabbergasted to see how strong the hotel lobbying was. Offshore interests are making it more and more difficult for local people to keep our islands. These bills would essentially make us criminals and residents should be given some type of exemption or consideration with a sliding scale of taxes or something. Hawaii's our home. We residents really care and we end up reinvesting our earnings back into our local economy. Like for example, the re-roofing that we did, um, I don't know, it goes on and on. But um, okay. we realize that we're really fortunate and along with the income 
it allows us time for um, the flexibility to have our fam make family memories on the property. And um, the laws are really outdated, 30 years old, um, and this is a great opportunity to fix them. Okay. So, but Could please you, don't ban so, them. Correct. Can you please, sum up? Yeah, please. please don't ban them. And thank you again for working together to solve this. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Just, can I add one comment? Yeah, just one quick one. Didn't that hey, because uh, you Bob Dylan wrote a song time. about crime in New Jersey, and then he, his lyric said, in Jersey, everything is legal as long as you don't okay. get caught. And that applies to these TV. Okay, that, all right. Thank here you. Too. Yeah, you've exhausted your time. Thank you. Uh, see Mufi Hanneman there, and then we have Christine Gray, Senator Sharon Moriaki, and Denise Boyway. Boyway. Okay, uh, Mr. Hanneman, you can go first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have been very consistent from the very beginning, members of the council, of where we stand on this issue. Uh, we want measures that will ensure transparency, accountability, enforcement, registration. We want a level playing field where everyone is playing by the same rules. And we've been doing this for years. What's changed now is that communities are being affected. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, the largest private sector visitor industry organization in the state, joined very strongly by the Hawaii Tourism Authority and Waikiki Improvement Association. So I think this is what is before you right now, is communities are being affected. Uh, and that's why I think the issue has gotten to the point now where the longer you delay, the more we're going to have to pay. Uh, every county has stepped up to do something, moving in that direction. It's not the perfect bill, but they're moving forward. And I appreciate all the time that you've taken to craft this bill. We ask that you no longer delay. Please move it out. Uh, we need uh, meaningful legislation to go forward. This could perhaps serve as a template for the rest of the counties to all play by the same rules. Uh, and certainly having the Department of Planning Permitting being able to do their job in this regard would be very uh, important. So we're here today to testify again in support of 89 because 89 allows, in our opinion, the flexibility for those to be grandfathered in. It also allows for some B&Bs to exist, and we just want them to exist in the areas where they're legal. They're legal, resort areas, we don't have a problem. It's when they try to proliferate into communities and neighborhoods, there's an issue there. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Questions? Mr. Hanneman? Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator Moriaki? Morning, Chair, members. Uh, I come before you as a resident of Kaka'ako as well as uh, the representative for Kaka'ako, Waikiki, Makali, Mohili, Ili, uh, and uh, Ala Moana. And, and I come um, bringing you the voices of real desperation. Uh, we live in a transforming transforming community but I just want to take us back to the reason why um, the concern there is a community plan that you you all follow uh, the development plans were there for long-range planning and we have seen um, the results of t tinkering and um, and I think we really need to look at the reason for a plan and long-range planning whether it's just for sustainability that's now added on with sea level rise it really is important for us to look at the whole big picture and I think you had mentioned it chair um, that that the reason why this is a problem is that it's not the the rentals the short-term rentals that are already zoned for that in resort areas or 3,500 feet from resort areas it's it's those that are clamoring and, and intruding and encroaching into residential communities that we call home and and I think that is the major problem of the unpermitted and what we're calling illegal um, rentals and and I'd like to to say that I, I, I applaud your, your Menor um, uh, Manahan CD2 because it's streamlined it. There's clear definitions, clear streamlined procedures. Uh, it tells you what is permitted, what is not permitted. It gives you registration. It gives you um, uh, even procedures for complaints by neighbors who are the ones who are most affected by the um, unpermitted uses. And so um, it's clear, it's easy to enforce. I did hear that there was an addition from one of the, the newer or, um, uh, amendments that uh, wanted to have, un, uh, have conditional permits. I would 
oppose that. I think that you have the, the um, uh, non-conforming uses. There are 800 of them. They need to be renewed. They need to be registered. They need to be assessed uh, as to their impacts on community. Because ultimately, when you look at planning, when you look at communities, it really is the impact on the people who are living around them. And I think the, the, the draft that you presented as CD2 uh, does all of that in a reasonable way. Even the fines have been reduced, so they're reasonable. Uh, and and uh, escalating if you have recurring violators, the scufflaws who keep on doing the, the, the violations, uh, they should be uh, so penalized. I do want to say something, since Wolfie is sitting next to me, is that it does impact on our number one driver of our economy, our tourist industry. Um, we are losing population. The only Sunbelt state losing population is because there's no affordable housing and the tourist industry is being affected. The, the, the um, average daily visitor um, spending is down. So if you look at the economy, it is being affected. So I, I urge you on the Senate um, or the legislature passed uh, SB 1292. Uh, we had a lot of debate we didn't feel that we were the ones to enforce zoning uh, codes, so that that is that was one of the real bases of, of our our discussion of not having enforcement in that language. So we really urge you to please act expediently uh, and pass enforcement. Um, I did hear from from uh, the DPP director of the difficulty in uh, enforcing. Um, non-conforming uses. So I would suggest that you delete that and, and work with what is simple and easily enforceable and let the, let the zoning code be enforced and see where you are in a year or two and, and come back and make changes. But I urge your, your um, moving this to full console. Thank you so much for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the senator? Okay, thank you for uh, joining us today. Okay, and uh, we also have um, Denise. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Denise Boisvert, and I live in the diverse neighborhood of Waikiki, where at least 30,000 people call home, and many of whom walk to work, to the hotels, to the tourism industry, or they easily take a bus or drive to work nearby. We are also a community. Um, whatever gets past today, please don't throw Waikiki residents under the bus. Don't make us the sacrificial lambs. We are a community as well. Um, despite zoning ordinances and because real estate agents are not doing their due diligence for purchasing for their purchasing clients, residential condo buildings in the apartment precinct of Waikiki are turning into many hotels. I know of a real estate agent not even like two years ago in a certain building in Waikiki, often known as the poster child of this issue, um, who bought four condos in one month and they were immediately turned into TVUs. They have continued to be TVUs. This is owned by a real estate agent. And despite three separate letters from the DPP to the board of that building, saying that none were allowed in that building, this real estate agent continues to do it. So, I mean, if the real estate agents are doing it and they're promoting it, I mean, aren't they regulated somehow? So anyway, I fully support the proposed um, CD2 to Bill 85 and the proposed CD2 to Bill 89, authored by council members Manor and Manahan because they have the strongest enforcement tools that the DPP desperately needs to do their jobs. Condo buildings have been blindsided. I mean, investors are coming out, we're, we're waking up and we have like six or eight uh, TVUs around us on a, a floor with 10 units, you know? I mean, uh, the longer you wait and the more we speak, as we speak, the more houses and condos will be turned into TVUs, causing more local people to not be able to purchase their own homes or to find reasonably priced rentals. You need to take action now. Please move either or both forward today. Thank you. Thank you. Question for the testifier? Okay. Not, uh, thank you. 
and uh, Christine Gray. Hi, um, I'm Christine Gray, and I support the Bill 85 CD with Ron Menor and um, Manahan. And the people from the illegal vacation rental industry here today are saying that passing Bill 85 will put hundreds of cleaners and vacation rental support people out of work and crash our economy. Uh, they want you to feel sorry for them. They have put themselves in this position. They have built their businesses on an illegal foundation. They have been blatantly breaking the laws for years, making big money, not caring in the least of how their greedy endeavors affect anyone but themselves. Hawaii economists have been telling us that Hawaii is bringing in less revenue now than we were 30 years ago, with million more tourists visiting than ever before. These millions of tourists are choosing to stay in a cheaper-than-hotel illegal vacation rental. They go directly to Costco from the airport. They start their vacation with a home-cooked meal. They wake up to a cheap home-style breakfast at their VRBO kitchen, and off they go to wear out our taxpayer-paid infrastructure. They do lots of fun, free stuff, like hikes and days at the beach and driving around all day to see our sights, wearing out our roads, causing traffic problems, and ignoring our parking regulations. Then they come back to what should be a non-tourist residential neighborhood and party. No bars or expensive cocktails for them. No, they get drunk and crazy right in the house next to you. Hey, they're on vacation. Putting a stop to this illegal activity will be good for Hawaii. This will put tourism, tourism back in resort zoned areas where it belongs and where it is profitable. It will solve overcrowding by knocking out the budget tourist and replacing them with a higher spending tourist. You can solve so many of Hawaii's problems. It returns affordable housing stock back to local residents. It protects the house of our, our health of our communities and encroaching tourism. It adds more money into the proper hotel zones and provides good jobs to union workers. It will stop the migration of our residents to other states. This is not the catastrophic event or the dire consequences that the illegal vacation rental industry is predicting or crying about. This is a market adjustment that will save Hawaii. Bill 85 is the right direction. Have the courage of your convictions and do what's right for the people of Hawaii. And um, that their failure to adequately fund their lifestyle with illegal activities should not constitute a zoning chart change for our neighborhoods. Thank you. All right. Any uh, questions? Okay. You know, um, we also know, I just noted that uh, there's a Chuck Gray. Is, is, are you related to him or? Yes. Okay. So please come forward. Chuck Gray. Okay. And then uh, also in that group will be uh, Molly, Molly or Molly Forti. My Van Lam. Lam. And Patrick McCain. Okay, Chuck Gray, please proceed. Good afternoon, um, Council Chair Ron Menor and Council members and committee members. Um, I am here to uh, recommend passing Bill 85, CD2 of uh, the Menor uh, Hanneman version, and uh, I just wanted to say um, enforcement is the key to a healthy residential community. The operators of illegal rentals are very well versed and unafraid to break the laws. I think they're emboldened by Airbnb and their stance, not really want to work with anybody, but wanting to threaten and sue. That's what I read about personally, about they're kind of like bullies, and I think that the council should go ahead and pass Bill 85 to start aggressive uh, enforcement because there's way too many in my neighborhood um, and uh, they're making a lot of big money and unless the laws are enforced we will have more of the cat and mouse games that f with fake 30-day leases, vacation rental hosts coaching their tourist customers to lie to them. I see this firsthand. I, I see it happen in my neighborhood. I'm not just quoting something I've heard from somebody. Enforcement needs teeth to bite back and mean business. These operators are quite creative and motivated to get the big money that they think they are entitled to at the expense of my residential neighborhood. And they're all over the place in my neighborhood. And I just wanted to add one thing. People tell a lot of stories, but my neighbor who has lived there for almost a year now. Well, he hasn't lived there. He bought a house for $7 million. 
and I can back this up if you want to check it out. He, um, it's a, it's a, it's a single-family residence. It has four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and on his ad, he says it will sleep up to 30 people. And today, right now, if you want to come by, I can show. He's there's 16 people staying there, and they're having a good time. He owns another house that he bought earlier earlier this year, four houses from there on the same street, and he paid $9.8 million for it, and he charges $3,200 a day for it. And that type of situation is what's making the property rise because he's able to get that much money per day for these things, and that property is going to just keep moving away, and nobody in Hawaii is going to be able to afford that. So thank you very much. Um, I recommend moving Bill 85, CD2, Menorah, into the next meeting, and that also, for all your hard work, and I've been against Bill 89 the whole time, but I would definitely, if I had any say, other than just a citizen, Bill 89, the way you guys have taken the time to write that thing, your version, Menor and Hanneman, uh, Manaham, sorry. Um, it's, it's quite amazing. You guys really have done a good job, and I feel that those two bills, I'm compromising on it, because I don't think we need any more rentals in residential neighborhoods I, I, it's, it's just not working i mean it really isn't it's, okay. it's crazy and i've called i've, I've used Thank all you. the laws that the city has put in place and it just goes and after three months they call me and say well sorry and they close the books so i'm out of here thank you okay well thank you any, any questions thank you okay uh, and then uh, Mo molly Fulte. yes yes i um, aloha council Thank you very much for allowing me to come. I am going to read a statement from the Lani Kailua Outdoor Circle in, in support of Bill 85, CD2, the Menor Manahan Bill. The Lani Kai Kailua Outdoor Circle supports residentially zoned neighborhoods and legislation that strengthens enforcement measures and ensures compliance with existing laws. Bill 85's proposed CD2, introduced by Council Members Menor and Manahan, establishes measures that would bring transparency and accountability to hosting platforms that advertise vacation rentals and clarifies requirements for bed and breakfast and transient vacation units operating under non-conforming use certificate. We appreciate the efforts of all Council Members who have proposed improved enforcement measures related to the operation of vacation rentals, but believe that the Menor Manahan proposal offers the most likely chance of regulatory success. Past enforcement measures, although well intended, have resulted in loopholes and disregard of the law, which has led to the proliferation of the illegal operations that we now experience. This has not only undermined the character and charm of our island communities, it has threatened the security of hotel workers and pushed affordable housing beyond the reach of many locals. We sincerely hope that the provisions for notices of violations, fines, and records of community complaints provided for in this bill will result in enforcement measures that can be implemented to better manage the essentially unregulated vacation rental industry. Lanikai Kailua Outdoor Circle cannot consider the legalization and further expansion of vacation rentals in residentially zoned neighborhoods until enforcement has been clearly demonstrated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Thank you for your testimony. 